Welcome to the tutorial on short arm cast application. These will probably be the most common casts that you apply at Children's. You will need to have stockinette, web reel, fiberglass, and water available and set out prior to the reduction. Note that short arm casts are not appropriate for most children under the age of two years old due to the likelihood of the cast slipping off below that age group. Use an above elbow cast in that particular group. General guidelines for the amount of material required for short arm cast application at the various age groups are shown here. Your goals are to use the least amount of materials necessary to maintain reduction, control movement, and allow removal of the cast without injury to the skin. A reduction needs to be performed before cast application. Each fracture is different, but in most cases you will need ulnar deviation and a dorsal mold proximally to maintain reduction in the cast. The easiest way to maintain ulnar deviation is to have your assistant or finger traps hold the thumb and then maintain reduction on the limb. Having an assistant or finger traps holding the reduction is important. You will then apply the stockinette as seen here. You want to protect the transition zones where fingers come out and the upper arm comes out of the cast with three layers of padding. The cast material should come to the knuckles. The cotton or web reel should be layered on distally proximally in such a manner as to not create wrinkles in the material. This will require you to tear the material as you turn corners. The cast padding should not be thick, especially at the fracture site, because the padding will compress proportionate to the amount applied, and if too much is applied at the fracture site, the padding will compress enough to lose reduction of the fracture. The cast padding should typically be two layers thick. Proximally, the cast should be longer on the ulnar side than the radial side. Your goal is to get the tip of the lacrinon, but leave the clearance in the antecubital space so that the child can flex their elbow. To accomplish this goal, the cast should have an oblique finish, typically even more oblique than what is ultimately shown on this particular cast. An additional piece of cotton can be applied at the distal and proximal borders of the cast to provide that third layer of padding at those transition zones or the edges of the cast as mentioned. Once a thin layer of padding has been placed, you can apply the fiberglass. The fiberglass should be briefly dunked in the water and can be shaken off lightly, but should not be squeezed. The fiberglass is rolled on loosely and not stretched on. Take care not to create sharp ed edges or creases when applying the fiberglass. You want to maintain the oblique pattern at the proximal end of the cast, again trying to get the cast to the tip of the olecranon while being short enough in the antecubital fossa to allow the child to flex their elbow. You can cut part way through the fiberglass to allow it to fit through the web space better. If you do this, be sure to fold the sharp edges of the fiberglass inward so that they do not damage the child's skin. Once the first layer of fiberglass has been applied, the edges of the stockinette can be folded back over the cast concealing the edges of the fiberglass and preventing the child from picking out the padding. You may not need the entire second roll of fiberglass. The thicker the cast, the more energy required to cut it off, which increases the likelihood of a burn. An interosseous mold should be performed using the palms of the hands, not the fingers. This will help to control rotation. The ulnar border of the cast should be flat, reflecting the shape of the ulna. The radial side of the cast should be convex, reflecting the shape of that bone. Use your assistant to help apply the three-point mold to maintain reduction of the fracture site. Your assistant should hold the thumb with one hand and apply dorsal pressure to the proximal portion of the cast. You will apply dorsal pressure at the distal end of the cast and at the fracture site with one hand and bowler pressure just proximal to the fracture with the other. Alternate between the three-point mold, the interosseous mold, and flattening the ulnar border until the cast is hardened. Be careful to maintain the reduction by maintaining ulnar deviation of the hand and your three-point mold. 
Soap or cast cream or gel can be used to keep your gloves from sticking to the cast material as you apply your molds. When complete, your cast should have a good interosseous mold, a straight ulnar border, and have been molded appropriately to maintain the reduction, which in most cases, again, will be ulnar deviation and a three-point mold with the first and third points being dorsal and the second point being volar. These example x-rays show a typical distal radius fracture that is apex volar with slight radial deviation. The in-cast x-rays show ulnar deviation and an apex dorsal three-point mold that maintains reduction. Thank you.